Hey guys, I love what Josh and Brandy are doing. Give them a listen because I'm a huge fan. I'm Emory King and you are watching The Ego's Last Stand. The King has spoken. Hey y'all, keep on hitting home runs, Josh. Love what you do. I'll see you soon. When I come around, got the whole thing wobbing. And we're back for another episode of The Ego's Last Stand. This is season two, The Quarantine Chronicles. And I'm your host, Josh Sardom, and I am joined today with a fellow comedian. Uh, this guy and I, we actually uh, just worked together not too long ago at the Comedy Caravan in Louisville. I got Dale Jones sitting in with me. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good. We, uh, yeah, we ended the uh, normalcy. I think that was the end of February we were together. It literally, I, I think, like, that was close to one of the last shows, like, around, right? Yeah, I had one more week after that. I did a casino up in uh, western New York, and then it all hit the fan. Yeah, uh, Rich Reagans and I went out to um, Virginia. We were at Causey's down in uh, Newport News. Oh, right. I remember seeing those posts. How yeah. was it? Oh, I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was a small crowd. Uh, the first night, second night was like totally jack steroids wise, but that was it, man. Came home. I was supposed to do a weekend with Eddie May at Comedy Off Broadway, and then. <laughs> nope. <laughs> And then a week later, seven more weeks of work was canceled. It was like, oh, this right. is awesome. Yeah, I think, let's see. No, I did one more week after that. I went to um, Backdoor Comedy Club in uh, O'Fallon. It was a new room. Oh, nice. Okay. The, outside St. Louis. And I flew home on the 14th, and on the 15th, I lost seven weeks. Yeah, it was like I had one, one phone call. Boom. And I was like, whoa. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm, I'm coming to you from my office. You're down, would you say, in your basement? This will be the man cave someday, but right now it's the, yeah. No, I can see it. I can, I can see the dartboard, see the, 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 the downstairs bathroom. It's I'm, imagining, nice. I'm imagining. No. Oh, you're mad. Yeah, <laughs> such an idiot. I can see the dartboard. There's a dartboard? <laughs> <laughs> I got a dartboard? I didn't know that. Why did everybody tell me there's a dartboard down here? <laughs> Nobody said a word. Yeah. Here's what's cool. The guy that had this before me, I don't know if he could see it, but that phone was been there when I bought the house. That is a rotary telephone. Yes, that's old school. And it's not hooked up. It doesn't work. I just don't want to get rid of it. I just ah, you gotta keep that. I just it's like the bat phone for nerds. You know, <laughs> it's the Green Lantern phone. That's what it is. <laughs> People will never know how much we were tethered to walls growing up. Right? I mean, that one's got a small cord on it, though. I need to put one of them big cords. It goes all the way across the room so I can just wrap it around. So. The one that ends up, like, getting all messed up in the center where you end up having to get rid of it anyway. Exactly. Then you trip and fall down. What happened? Nothing, nothing, nothing happened. Yeah, they'll never know the pain of, of being a, a teenager and trying to talk to a girl on one of those in your family's living room with your whole family there. Yeah. That wasn't embarrassing at all. No, that's why you had the long cord and you could stretch it and go and stand in a closet. You just see the right. cord go. <laughs> I was talking to Sally, you jerk. <laughs> yeah, and then your sister walks by and just hangs up and goes, I'm sorry. So, I need the phone. Get off. I'm the oldest. <laughs> right. Or they unplug the cord on you. That was always a thing. So we kind of got this opposite thing going on. I shaved all my stuff off. You're growing it. Look at that. Yeah. I, uh, I just thought, what the heck? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I mean, I actually, uh, I read for a part, um, this, uh, this, this producer contacted me and looking for someone that kind of looks like me, but I need to be clean shaven. So I read for the part and I actually, I made it pretty far, which is kind of cool. Um, it was awesome. me and this other dude and I ended I'm, I'm actually his understudy. So if he like fucks up or gets sick or gets hit by a bus mistakenly, um, I might get that part. So you, know, you never know. Do so you know where this guy lives? I mean, you're going to trip him while he's walking down the street or I know exactly where he lives. <laughs> <laughs> just hiding his bushes when he checks his mail. Wow! I'm so sorry. I, I, I was pretty stoked about it, though. You know, I'd, I'd never done any parts or anything like that. And this guy was, like, in, in, like, Captain America, Winter Soldier, and, like, he's got, like, some real acting credits. And here's this dork Damn. that only goes up on stage, and I actually did pretty good. My wife That's was awesome. in the room. Where's it filming at? What's that? Where's it going to film? Oh, I'm not sure where they're going to go on like location, but the, the company is actually out of Richmond here in Kentucky. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I ended up, uh, me and the producer ended up getting along really well. I'm actually writing for him because uh, he asked me for some of my sample of my writing. So I sent him uh, parts of the book that I wrote, and he really likes my writing. So 
It's like, shit, okay. Do some writing. Well, look at you. Well, you know. That's, that's awesome. That's the I, cool the, uh, I beat Star Wars on the hard level. <laughs> that's what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've moved on to the master level of uh, Battlefront. It only took me seven years to freaking get it, but yeah, that's what I'm doing with my downtime. I'm, I'm, so paint, I'm, you. I'm painted the damn mailbox. That's how <laughs> bored I am. I put tape and put all around the numbers. My wife goes, you can't paint that and not get paint on the numbers. I go, watch me. Right. And I've Three hours out there painting this mailbox to prove a point. You're getting acting roles. I'm painting freaking mailboxes and playing <laughs> video games. Let me ask you a question. What's your uh, your worst uh, coronavirus quarantine story? Do you, have, do you have like something bad that happened or something that you like really hurt, hurt you to adjust? Other than losing seven weeks, right? Because <laughs> <Like, that's laughs> yeah. I think all those comics are feeling that because that just sucked. Other than the self-employment and putting the mortgage on hold, I don't know if I have any major real bad stories. And, and what killed me is, you know, so I, I filed for unemployment first time ever in my life, which hurt the ego big time. And uh, <laughs> of course, they they wind their foot up and kick me really hard in the nuts by telling me, uh, you haven't made enough to qualify. <laughs> that's sad. <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> that's sad. Yeah, we uh, you know, we did the, make the SBA loans, and then we found out Ruth Chris took all that money. <laughs> and then we did, uh, what else did we do? We haven't got our stimulus checks yet because they never put money in the bank. So I guess they got to mail the check or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't even know if it's been approved or not yet. I don't even know if mine has either. And uh, every time you go to the website, it goes, we don't know. Right. And then, uh, the self-employment thing, they don't have it set up for Georgia to get unemployment if you're self-employed. Oh, really? And they said, once you get it set up, then you'll get it like a month later. So they said, probably late May, you'll get your check. Yeah. He said, but we'll back pay. I go, oh, well, that'll help. You know, we'll, I'll let you know what dumpster I'm living in. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll we'll back pay. We back pay my stomach because <laughs> it needs food. <laughs> we found toilet paper. That was a good day. We found some toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous, isn't it? It is. It's I, nuts. It's like Willy Wonka hid like golden tickets in the toilet paper, and everybody's just like fucking raping them from the street. And today, yeah. in Christie's auction house, we have the last roll of Charmin. Let us start the bidding at 500 please. <laughs> it's just so funny that everybody goes, wow, okay, I'm going to lose my job. I need to take care of my asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the best meme that I saw that had to do with that was uh, the guy said, I'm sorry, sir, you have COVID-19. He goes, that's impossible. I have three cases of toilet paper. <laughs> right. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, we, we've been, to be honest, I'm, I'm making jokes, but we've been very blessed. I mean, we're still, we still got our head above water. There's a lot of people that are worse conditioned than I am. And, uh, so I don't have any really hard stories. I haven't lost anybody. Thank God. I my mom's still, my mom's still safe. And, um, yeah, we're doing, we're, we're hanging in there like everybody else. Well, knock on wood. I hope, hope that continues. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I haven't had anybody in my family that's contracted it or anything. Um, That's good. God, because I, I know a couple people that say, you know, their their family members have passed because of it. But it sucks. It just it kind of boggles my mind. Because, um, I mean, it's just, yeah, uh, people are, are dying from it. But, I mean, people die from things every year. What what made this the disease that everybody lost their shit over? I mean, I, granted, I mean, it, you know what it does. Like, when you get it, you literally, like, it suffocates you. Like, it's, it's right. pneumonia on crack. Like, it stops your ability to process car or, or, or oxygen, oxygen. You know, it stops that the, in the lungs. It makes it so you can't do it. And that's so it's like, a, it's like an emphysema times 10 or something then. But, like, yeah, like, you just, you, you, can't, you can't breathe. You suffocate. And it's just, it's horrible. That's why they put them on the ventilators, because they're trying to help them breathe. But it's, I mean, what a horrible way to die. So it's scary as hell. I get that. But it's like... I mean, they're, they're, what would they say that the total deaths in the United States? Uh, we we've got the total reported, I think, higher than than anybody right now. I think. Here, let me look up because I I go to that thing on um, online all the time and see what the hell it is. Yeah, I think it's like forty four thousand. So today's numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we doing globally or are we just doing America? No, just the United States. 
Confirmed cases, 823,257. What about deaths? Deaths, 44,228. And recovered is 75,177. You mean 7,500? No, 75,000. Well, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was equating deaths with recovered. <laughs> uh, yeah, 75,000 recovered out of the 44 that didn't. Did, I'm math. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the same way. <laughs> we, Dale, we're comics because we weren't good at other things. <laughs> right. I don't carry the one. I don't carry anything. I, I don't can't. believe in carrying a one. I don't believe. I don't it. carry a job. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, so forty-four thousand deaths. That's not. That, I mean, that's, that's nothing to, to shake a stick at by any means. But I mean, how many how many do we live lose a year from cancer? How many do we lose a year from you know drunk driving? I mean, the numbers are significantly larger than that. So I mean, I just why did we pick this disease to say holy shit? Everybody needs to lock down. There's a ton of stuff that's contagious. You know, I don't know. Let's look at the board. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have no idea. I, I don't I don't know why they did that. Maybe it has something to do with bats. I have no I, idea. And it's kind of scary, though, isn't it? I mean, it's like they literally, this thing has locked down the world. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, not Georgia. Georgia is opening this week. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, and they're opening only the essential places. Now, here's what's essential to rednecks. Um, tattoo parlors. Of course. <laughs> the salons. <laughs> uh, massage parlors. Because, by God, you, you got to get your... Gotta your happy ending somehow. Gotta relax. And then on Monday, they're opening movie theaters, but they're only letting 50 people in at a time. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. And we're the only state that's done that so far that's opening. And the reason they're doing it is because I think the governor doesn't want to play it, pay unemployment. So he's like, well, we'll send these people back to work. And then if it hits the fan, then we'll get another month before we can send the checks out again so we can save some money. Well, uh, that's just ridiculous because, I mean, if, if this thing is as dangerous as everybody's saying it is, you don't want to be around other people right now. I mean, you're going to yeah. you're gonna end up going out there and getting all, getting sick or getting somebody else sick, and it's just going to be one big catastrophe after another. So on the bright side, if, we, if, it, if it hits the fan, I will be able to get to the Atlanta airport in about 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know that's a little twisted, but maybe we can just thin the herd, to quote Blake Clark. We can thin the herd a little bit, and we can get some normal people going and say these idiots going, I need my nails done. Right. <laughs> I have to get my tattoo. There's nothing that says I, I want to catch a disease by, A, having blood exposed, and B, being real close proximity to somebody. I got him right up next to you as blood's going everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm the idiot that got two tattoos the week we worked together. But I didn't know there was a disease on the way <laughs> in my defense. And one of them was a wild stallion one, right? Yeah. I could have died for Bill and Ted, and I went for it. And, and a touching up a bullwinkle, for crying out loud. I didn't even do ones that meant anything. I just... <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Hey, uh, so they're doing, yeah, they're opening Georgia back up. That's um, well, that's, that's nice. scary. Still. Hey, did my sound just improve at all? I, I don't know. My, I think my hearing got better. You think your hearing got better? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hey, it could have. You never know. This, I mean, uh, they all this quarantine brought the Dolphins back to Italy, and I don't even know they're missing. Did you know the Dolphins were missing from Italy? I didn't know. No, oh, I, I thought they played Miami. That's what I thought, too. Um, <laughs> and they're like, and we can see the, the shipwrecks in the, in the Michigan Lake. Um, I, I mean, I, I, these things I didn't know were a thing, you know? <laughs> I didn't. I don't even watch the news. I don't even care. I've been playing Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm painting mailboxes, and, and I, I, I did some wiring because I'm suicidal. So I was like, hey, I'm going to wire this stuff up. Don't turn off the box. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> and, I, and I thought you you were just going for the spiky hair look. And so you've been doing. Oh, it. <laughs> oh I just wow! I was like, wow, this turned white. That's what electricity does. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, so how's the missus? Everything going okay? 
yeah, yeah, everything's good. Jody's running around. She's trying to keep herself busy, too. She sewed everything. She's sewing our clothes. And we're, just, just, we're going full my, Amish. My wife, like, she grew up being, you know, a seamstress, but she hasn't done it in years. And all this thing's happened, so she's like, well, I can sew, so I'm going to make people masks. She went to Amazon to order dim sewing machine. She only found one. They were sold out of everything. It's like all these women are just like, hey, we're going to sew now. And, uh, yeah, so she's been making masks. She makes pretty good pretty good uh, stuff. She's pretty talented. Yeah, she made us some masks. But I think she made mine out of the pajamas she made me because they smell funny. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I don't even smell like Fritos. Right. <laughs> it smells like burnt Pop-Tarts. What the <laughs> hell? Mine has a, a piece missing right where the nose is. I, I don't know what she's trying to tell me. <laughs> Go outside and breathe deep. <laughs> this is all covered. <laughs> you got a circle right here. <laughs> it's just open. Just breathe. Breathe, fat guy. <laughs> blows, blows pollen in your face. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, everything's going good here. I can't. I can't complain. You know, I, I, like I, I hear all these stories of people just like losing their mind, being in quarantine and whatnot. But I mean. It's been great. I mean, we, uh, you know, my, my wife's always worked from home anyway, but I mean, like, we're just able to spend a lot of time with the daughter and, you know, get some work done around the house. And we just, we just built her a little slide um, that she's been going ape shit on. I mean, there's a lot of cool things you can do when you got all this time on your hands, you know? Right. Yeah. One of my, one of my comic buddies said, uh, yeah, we're stuck at home, but our pets have never been happier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to leave. <laughs> Yeah, now they're not excited about anything anymore. You know, you get the mail. Yeah, they'll be back for six weeks. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, we had a lot of uh, just hanging up. And I think as comics, we're used to sitting in a hotel room by ourselves. So this is kind of, you know, other than the paycheck, if I was getting paid, I think I could sit home. You know, I'd like to do a show every once in a while. but Yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, but if I could do all the bills and get stuff done around the house, you know, I'd be like, okay, I took a two month vacation that'd be pretty cool right yeah uh, freaking uh, th there's a couple people that are doing uh zoom comedy shows and uh mikey winfield i don't know if you, you know that comic but yes he, yeah he invited me to, to do one so and he said he said hey put some uh, cash in your pocket i was like really <laughs> that's cool i want to figure that out so you know jump on that bandwagon you can make money doing this why not right yeah i don't know if i want to do a zoom show have you done one no i would like I'm, I, I am the typical comic. When I say a joke, I need the laughter. I need the interaction. I can't do well, it. Well, I guess it's like this, though. So you'll have like eight to ten people. It's like a conference call thing so? is what I understand. So you, it'll be you and somebody running the room at a different, you know, and then like ten people in your audience or whatever. Well, you know, you and can have up to 500 people. Okay, so I guess whatever, I didn't know that was that many. So then you can hear their laughter come through, but then you can also hear some jackass sitting in his home with no pants on and a heck of you. So, um, I don't have pants on right now. Does, was I, I, <laughs> I didn't wear pants before this. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that's the deal. You can hear a response immediately, but I just, I don't know. I want to be in front of a live audience. Yeah, me too. Me too. I don't think I'm poor enough yet that I want to do a Zoom show. I think when it really hits the fan and they're like putting a for sale sign in the yard, I'll be like, hey, where's those Zoom guys? Right. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I'd much rather be on a stage. I, I like the human interaction. I, I really yes. like the way the stage feels. I guess that's why we do it, right? Yeah, that. And we hate ourselves. No, that's <laughs> 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 it's so funny. Like when you first got into comedy, did you did you like did you marvel at the fact that most of the comics you met had some had some type of like mental health disorder? Like every like I'd say probably ninety eight percent have some type of like either self loathing, major depression, um, like just complete like hates on th like. There's always something. Some proclivity, especially the better they are, the bigger the proclivity is. <laughs> yeah, that took a while for me to figure that one out. But you don't see that when they're on stage. When you're an open micer, you really don't get that connection because you're standing in the back and you just see them go from the green room because you don't really get to talk to them. You know? Yeah. So it's like 
at 11 at night when the show's been over for two hours and then you see them drunk playing poker and they're digging through the kitchen trying to find cold french fries and you're like wow that dude's got some problems <laughs> <laughs> i've also seen them pile cocaine up on the floor and take a straw and they run in a circle like they're doing the dizzy bad thing yeah it's like oh okay he doesn't love himself <laughs> <laughs> You can't ride the white sand like that and think everything's okay. That's just, that's just not how it goes. No. But when I was starting out, I didn't see that. You know, I'd have to wait till after hours. You know, when you see them on stage, you think, oh, well, they got their shit together. You know, that's, that's amazing. And then you talk to them afterward, you're like, oh, oh, you, you blink a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I met Charles Fleischer. He did the voice for Roger Rabbit. So I'm, I'm in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I was just starting out. So it's 93, and um, for them, the comedy's dead. It, the 80s boom is going down, and they are just and they don't want other people to start being comics. And I guess there's a flood because everybody's watching A&E, even at the improv, and thinking they could do it. So Charles Fleischer just giving me this huge speech about how comedy's dead and I shouldn't do it, da-da-da-da-da. And eventually, I guess I pissed him off because I just had this big-ass grin on my face because I'm talking to Roger Rabbit. And he goes... Uh, and I can tell by the look on your face, you ain't going to quit. And he just gets up and he walks out of the room. <laughs> so then Tim Northern comes up to me because he's an open mic. We start together. And he goes, what did he say? And I go, I don't know. That was Roger Rabbit. <laughs> 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 so I was so starstruck. I, I don't think I didn't see the dirt bag come in until about year two, something like that. And then you start looking around going, oh, wow, these – these guys are as messed up as I am, you know. I mean, I and we and I'm definitely included in that. I mean, we all we we all struggle with something, and uh, it, it's just it's funny. It, like it almost got to a point where me and a couple of men that we were traveling the other lot, we would play the the uh, you know. So what mental health disorder does this guy have? You know, <laughs> it's like, right? Mental health wheel. You know, I was like, spin it. Oh, he's obsessive compulsive. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> 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 I, I, I have this round. I got this round. All right. <laughs> right. You just got quiet. Something happened. The sound went down. My sound went down? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh oh. Okay, I cranked my thing up. Is it me you or you? There you now you're back. No, you were talking and it went like that and then it came oh, back. Weird. It might have been where my, my fat lock hit my microphone. <laughs> yeah, I got the Ben Franklin going on. Look at Ben Franklin. <laughs> I don't think you blocked your whole microphone. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst. This is this is the absolute worst of being a big guy. Your fucking neck just <laughs> like if I could just sit around like this all day. <laughs> Get some clothes pins. Just put it right in. <laughs> My my wife my wife like offered to duct tape my fat back just <laughs> See and I got the opposite problem. I if I don't eat my body eats me like cancer. It's friggin' ridiculous. I, I gotta just come, Yeah, I got such high metabolism my body just eats itself. And everybody goes, Oh, that's really sad. I'm like, No, if I don't if I don't keep eating, if my body goes, Oh yeah, it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're not gonna do it all. Your one of your boobs disappears. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> hey, wake up in the morning. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm losing fingers. <laughs> That's why my dad. When my dad had well, here, yeah, this is a great story. So when my dad had cancer, <laughs> they uh they had to put him on AIDS medicine because it was eating his body so fast that he had AIDS metabolism. So he's like um. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but it makes you eat like nonstop. And he would just be shoving hamburgers and hot dogs in his face. He goes, my jaws hurt. I can't stop eating. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. It was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. So I, I have that same luck to where if you don't eat, yeah, your body just starts. <laughs> just and I, I wish I could rev up my metabolism. So I mean, I can, I can eat. Boy, I can eat. But Jesus, like my body's just like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good here. I'm just, I'm comfy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I eat like crazy. I guess during the middle of the night, all the workers just come out and go to town. <laughs> I wake up and go, oh, shit, that's gone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you always been that way, huh? Yeah. Yeah. 
I was fat as a kid, well, a little baby. But then once the baby fat was gone, it was uh, it was over. Yeah, then I was the workers clocked in. That was Skeletor for the rest of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the most I've weighed now, one seventy. Yeah, and I had to fight like crazy to get to that. You said one seventy. Yeah, I was one twenty five when I graduated high school. One, maybe one thirty. Wow. Um, yeah. I graduated high school. I was 210, and uh, I went into the military, and I, I came out of basic training weighing 168, and then wow. I went to Korea, and I started training as a medic, and part of the training is you have to learn how to do something called a fireman's carry. Well, that involves carrying someone your own weight a long time, uh, you know, for good distances, and my legs are huge. And so my weight bulked up to like 220, and then it's just, it's, I've never seen South. But I, I think when I came home from my first tour, I think I weighed like 217, I think, and that was in 2000. But that was muscle. Oh, yeah, I was, I was Jesus. When I was in shape, I was, I was a monster when I was in shape. But, God, I, I haven't seen South of 200 since <laughs> basic training. <laughs> I but I don't come off, I mean, I don't think you're, obese or anything like you're big you know what i mean when i look at you i don't think that i just think you're a big guy i was 300 pounds when we worked together well you carried well because i didn't think well i carry it all right here in my stomach <laughs> <laughs> see the trick is I center mass <laughs> yeah i mean i worked with ralphie may i didn't god rest his soul yeah that didn't uh that didn't dawn on me at all when i saw you i just thought i have he's Big dude, you know. I mean, I'm I'm coming down because I I need to I need to drop the weight. I'm in I'm in my two seventies now, but uh, I just I I need to get like if I'm really gonna make any progress, I need to get like two twenty. I need to get down there. Yeah, I think everybody struggles, no matter where 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 you're at on the thing, you know. Speaking of losses, we just lost Vic Henley. Did you hear that? Yes. Yeah. Do you ever work with Vic? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. He was he's been on the podcast twice and uh, uh, worked with him quite a bit at Comedy. I probably love him to death. Miss him. Uh, did, yeah, I worked with him once in uh, early '90s. I got to MC for him and hang out for the week. No, he was he was extremely cool. But I I was only with him that yeah, one week out of 28 years. So. What a fantastic individual, though. And God, what a storyteller. Yeah, that man, and he would rivet you too. I mean, he'd start talking and you just. Yeah, <laughs> keep talking, Uncle Vic. I mean, he's just—he was awesome. I love him. Uh, when Brandy and I found out that he—he's uh—he because he, yeah, Brandy just had him on the show. I was in Dayton with Richie, uh, Rich Reagans. Okay. And, uh, that was the week that Vic was uh, at Comedy Out Broadway. So Brandy and uh, Madison Pohl had him on the show, and uh, you know, so Brandy got to get to know him some and. You know, and she texted me that night saying, you know, she, she went, oh, my God, Vic. And I was like, no, it's Josh. What, what are you talking? And she's like, no, Vic. I go, Henley? She goes, yeah. And I was like, my heart stopped. I was like, oh, no. And I thought, like everybody was saying, oh, is it the coronavirus? And no, he had a pulmonary embolism. He had a uh, blood clot that went to his heart. So, yeah. I mean, it just, just sucks, man. I mean, what yeah. you, and it, because of the times, can't even have a funeral, a proper funeral, you know. It just sucks, dude. Yeah, there was another comic, uh, um, Clint Knorr, and he uh, he passed away. And, uh, yeah, they him? haven't had a funeral for him yet either. Were you close with him? No, I was I, I worked with him a couple times, but nothing uh, – but I knew of him. But, I mean, that was just another comic that passed away. He wasn't the level that, you know, Vic was, but he was a great dude. He was, yeah. I'd worked with him a couple times. But um, same thing, though, and it, you can't. Just, you know, people call me and go, when's Clint's funeral? I go, I don't, I don't think they're going to have it. Yeah, you can't. I mean, it's just – well, in Georgia, you can. You just have it at a, at a tattoo parlor. And right. Exactly. You have it at the movie theater. <laughs> they, can, they can do it right before they play the boss. <laughs> boss lady or whatever the hell they're going to play. Boss lady. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's uh, – yeah, it's weird times, man. I mean, what? I mean, obviously, comedy clubs are going to be like on the bottom of the list of things that they're going to open up because it's not a requirement. So, I mean, what the hell are we going to do? I mean, it's like, are, are well, we since gonna... they opened Georgia up, I guess they could. People would just pick and choose what the hell they want. But I, I mean, my manager runs the punchline, and he's like, "Nah, we're not doing it." He goes, 
He goes, we're going to wait till June 1st and see what everything looks like. And if we got to keep going, we'll go further. And then they're talking about putting up uh, spit guards or something on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> or have the comics. He goes, we could have the comics wear masks and we could put the punchline across the mask. And I go, yeah, I mean, and you use facial expressions in your act. That's really going to help with it, man. I don't got to be the eyebrow guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spit guards. Can you picture that? All of a sudden, I'm going to feel like I'm at Golden Corral. The right. Chocolate fountain. <laughs> Everybody wears a welder's mask. It just has this thing. Yeah, going in with the glove. Have you seen that? Uh, Norm MacDonald, right before this all hit the fan, he went on stage at the improv and – Los Angeles, and he got gloves and a mask on, and he walks on stage and is doing his act. <laughs> no. Did he know it was coming, or was it just Norm being Norm? I think it was – they were starting to warn about it, you know, but he went on and was just talking – I mean, they had talked about coronavirus, but they hadn't shut everything down yet. And uh, he went on stage with the gloves and the mask on. and I think he took the mask off, but, yeah. Well, everybody's There's, like – Hundred people in the crowd just laughing, going, "Ah, this is so funny!" I mean, yeah, exactly. As a genius. Nobody had any clue. Everything was getting ready to shut down, so they just thought it was. They thought it was like SARS. You know how we all used to laugh about SARS and go, "Oh yeah, they got a mask on." That's funny. <laughs> I still laugh about SARS. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know, man. And they say uh, COVID twenty is falling right behind this thing. And uh, it's like, so where's the end of this? Where's where's the next? COVID-20. I haven't even heard this noise. What's this? Yeah, well, I mean, there's COVID-1 through 19 that's already been out. And now they're saying COVID-20 is coming, and it's apparently as the now. idiot. That's why they call it COVID-19, because there's 19 versions of this? Right. Oh, I didn't know that. I just thought they picked a damn number. I had no clue. I, sometimes I listen to the news. Sometimes. Not all the time. I didn't know this was a sequel. <laughs> it's just bizarre man it's like why why on earth like, like oh i don't know I don't so know. there's been more covid movies than jason movies is that what we're saying here we're saying, <laughs> we're saying rocky needs to catch up is what we're saying <laughs> damn wow okay so it's gone through the bitter stage it's fought back it's been divorced <laughs> <laughs> had a manager die it's had a lot of things okay wow. this covid seems some shit. a couple times uh right <laughs> it found out it had a son it didn't know about that's right that's right that's where covid okay. comes in <laughs> well, let me learn. i'm learning a lot i did not know this i really didn't know that's why it was covid 19 that's how big of a moron i am i have no idea i, I, was, like, I was like oh he's picked a number no, there's, there's so many, like, I, I, I think there's a ton of misinformation out there. I think there's a ton of things not being said. I think I don't think we're being told the whole story. But why on earth would the whole world lock down if this thing isn't either 20 times more dangerous than what they're saying or there's something else going on? I mean, yeah, what was the one conspiracy theory I heard? That uh, it was invented on purpose to uh, uh, th thin out the population? I, I, I've heard that it's, it was a CIA attack on China that backfired. I, I've heard my favorite one. And if you know anything about me, you know that I absolutely love alien conspiracy shit. Um, yes. What is they said that this is an alien disease that was made to thin us out so they could take us over better. And I absolutely love that. That makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. There's just too many of us to probe. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> Lord knows it's not like they're not trying, <laughs> they're trying to get to all of us, but you know, we got to take a number. <laughs> There's too much probing. We got to thin some of these people out. We can't probe everybody. <laughs> you got that one guy that shows up. He's all shaky going, I'm not probing another fat redneck. You're not making me do it. <laughs> it's only rednecks. Of course it is. <laughs> how many how many businessmen off Wall Street's going, this alien took me and probed my <laughs> dinghy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you never hear that. You never. So I had a meeting at the MGM Grand, right. and I'm walking to my Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Teslas, they warn you, alien approaching, alien approaching. Right, they do. <laughs> walking to my Tesla. 
<laughs> and the five hundred dollar hooker looks at me and says, "Hey, there's a short green man in your trunk." <laughs> <laughs> Good. So oh, there I was. The spotlight hit me from above. No, it doesn't happen. It's always there was. I seen right. it. <laughs> me and Cooter playing horseshoes in the barn. Cooter is always there. He's always there. Him and Festus. <laughs> and we're fisting a goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the anim animal mutilation stories, they're not. Mutilation. They're not alien mutilations. These rednecks go, I wonder what happens if you take his cheek off. I mean. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I got some dynamite and a six pack of PBR. What you want to do tonight, Clem? <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Yeehaw. <laughs> yeah. I'm related to some of these people. That's the sad part. I've been to the funerals going, why is he wearing a Muppet Show shirt? Well, that's the nicest one he has, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> That actually happened at my uncle's funeral. I looked at my dad, and I go, why is that dude wearing a Muppet Show t-shirt? That's the nicest shirt he has, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Dale, the rednecks have been so prolific, I'm afraid we're all related to them somehow. <laughs> we are. We are. Yeah, they, they, believe me, they're not afraid to be with their own. They're not afraid to be with you. So that's just the way it goes. So do you think there's any... Anything in any of those conspiracy theories, or you think it's all horse crap, or what do you think? What's your personal take? On? I think they're not telling us the whole story. I think there's something else that's going on because uh, this is unprecedented. The world has never shut down for any virus before. I mean, you can't tell me that AIDS isn't scary as shit. And in the beginning, in the '80s, we didn't know anything about it. We didn't know how it was transmitted. We and it was just killing people. It just it disassembled your immune system and killed you. And it scared the shit out of everybody. World didn't shut down. I mean, it. it in my opinion, well, they thought that was completely. They thought you had to be gay or a heroin addict, and that was the only that two ways. Later. That was later when it first came out. I'm talking about late seventies, early eighties when it first came out. It was just yeah. killing people, and they had no idea. They were like, "Why is this happening?" They weren't so. They didn't. They didn't start putting the pieces together until a lot of research. But they didn't shut the world down because of it. You know. No. So. Why now? Why why is this particular virus made us all shit ourselves and close us up and it, see my conspiracy theory mind says they're trying to keep us away from seeing something so they can like you know, look at the left hand, not the right hand, you know. It's like they're they're trying to do something or they're not telling us something. That's what I personally think. Well, that's pretty standard though. I think that's always they're always trying to hide something. So I could see something in that. I mean, I think that's why, that's why they say, shoot a gorilla. They'll all get angry and run over there, and then we can do whatever we want over here. You know, I, 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 I agree with that completely. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's honestly, that's standard government procedure when it comes to a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, we've got to make the story up to keep them busy. Yeah. Drop the top king, and then we'll do all this stuff over here. <laughs> I am not the damn truth. Did you watch that? Yes. I'm telling you, that was nine episodes of sheer bliss for me. I'm watching this thing going, you know what? My life's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. Here's how much we watched it. They dropped an extra episode with interviews, and we were like, they did extra interviews? And we went back and we watched those two. <laughs> My God. Then our neighbors put a sign in their yard. I ended up, we put it on a, our Where the Joneses thing. Uh, we put, our neighbors put a sign in their yard said, Honk, if you hate Carol Baskin. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. So me and Jody made a sign, and we live right across the street. So we made a sign with a arrow point to their house, saying "Honk if you think our neighbors killed Carol, <laughs> Carol's husband." <laughs> <laughs> well, then we got people walking through our neighborhood, just looking at both signs and laughing and taking pictures. Yeah, <laughs> that was week three of the quarantine. That's how bored we got. We're making signs pointing at our neighbors, telling them they killed people. What else are we supposed to do? I mean, our governor's got us friggin' like, you know, uh, at 10 a.m. He wants everybody to like honk your horns or ring bells. And uh, he's got us uh, showing support by uh, displaying green lights in our, our windows. I mean, our governor is actually like, he he went, it's Andy Brashear, if you, you know or, or don't know. Um, yeah. but he, he's like on the forefront. Kentucky's actually on the top of the list as far as being ahead of this thing. Cause he, he took action fast. 
and he did really good. And I, I think he really saved the state from a lot of uh, problems that we could have had. But at the same time, it's like, what the fuck are we supposed to do? I mean, we're, I, he, he doesn't want you going out, and I, I understand that. But he's like, you know, if you're outside jogging and you walk up and you see somebody, turn around and go back home. And it's like, right, dude, it's not that contagious. <laughs> Stop. You know, I've been I've been to Kroger numerous times since this whole thing went off. Um, you know, I put a mask on because that's what they recommend. Um, you know, I don't want my wife and my baby getting sick. So, of course, I put a mask on to protect people. But, God, they, I just I want to know why this thing is so uh, creeping people out so bad. Well, at least you got somebody taking care of you as far as governor-wise. Ours is – he was the last one to shut down, I think. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and then the first one to open up. So, we're – we're the petri dish state. <laughs> Let's see what happens to them. Poke your head out, Bob, and see if they're still shooting. <laughs> I was wondering why Tennessee was eating popcorn. They're like, watch Georgia. <laughs> right? And Florida's looking around going, just let them go. We're tired of getting attention. You know, they opened with it. Jacksonville opened their beaches too. Yeah. Um, it, it comes down to money. They don't care. Yeah, That's all. you're right. And what's cool about our governor is he doesn't care about the politics side of it. He said, like, he, he does a briefing every day at 5 on TV, every day. And uh, one day he's out there and he's doing, and this is like a couple days ago, there were protesters at the Capitol and they went by the window that he's, the, the briefing room that he normally does that, and you couldn't right. hear They were chanting so loud. They want, they want the state open back up. And, and Brashear goes, he goes, listen, this isn't a polit politics thing. He goes, I'm trying to save Kentucky lives. He goes, I don't care if I get reelected or not. He goes, so this is what we're doing. And he locked down the state and he said, uh, he's, he's not going to open the state or start to open the state back up until he has 14 days of no growth of the virus. So if he has 14 days in a row of it's not going up anymore, then he'll start staging opening things back up. He's not going to do it all. Okay. He's going to do the way that the president recommended. So, I mean, he's just, he, the guy's serious, and it's like, like him, don't like him, Republican, Democrat, whatever you are, he doesn't give a shit. And I, I kind of respect that. You know, I, I, I like the fact that this guy just said, do it in my way. And it's right. And it's a safe way. He's not doing it a jackass or he's, so that's cool. Yeah, we had a, a 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, and I think that lasted 78 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia. He <laughs> said, hey, man. We need some chewing tobacco. We got to go out. <laughs> <laughs> this line at the liquor store is bullshit. We're cutting it down to two feet between people. <laughs> that gummit, I got to get my bottle of Rebel Yell. <laughs> Good God. I'm joking. I'm, t I'm making jokes, but it, it, it's, it's kind of it's bizarre. It's, it is. I can't believe they just went, all right, well, screw them. We're going to do this. I mean, That's, at the end of the day, I mean, governors do have, they're supposed to be the ones that are in control of their their state, and we're united because of the fact that all the governors originally agreed to what the federal government stated. Um, yeah. So the federal government in turn has to agree with what the governors say. So you got to, I mean, at the end of the day, if, I, I, I believe if the federal government thinks that governors are just not giving a shit about their citizens, they're going to step in. Um, but I think they're going to give every governor a chance to do the right thing. And I, I think that's what they're doing right now, which they should. Yeah. Cause I mean, these guys were elected to office. I guarantee not one of them thought this was going to happen during their election. You know? No, no. But what a nightmare this would be as a leader. Wouldn't it's it? a little sad when a uh, Mississippi's going, wow, look what Georgia did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Arkansas goes, <clears throat> what, <laughs> what COVID, what, oh, what, what's going George is doing what? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, Texas wants to just go back to smoking bandit days. Let's bring liquor across the borderline. Let's go. Yeehaw. <laughs> I would actually like that. <laughs> I'm do, hey, gas is everybody gets a Trans Am and a semi trailer and you go out and get your own. Stuff. I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's do it. Let's cannonball run this bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm ready to cannonball run this book. Actually, my son was getting ready to do it. It was like a cannonball run thing, but it was a, um, they canceled it. So he was going to go from Kentucky to Key West. They had to take a, a old, a car and they had to cut the top of it off. Right. They take the top of it off. They take the windshield out. They wear motorcycle helmets and they drive <laughs> their cars. 
<laughs> had the car done. They had, they had they had chopped the top off of it, took the windshield out, everything, oh. and uh, and then instead of racing though, they had to go to certain points and check in online or something. And then if you hit the most checkpoints, that way you weren't speeding or whatever. Right. And and they go all the way to Key West, and he had some old beat up Acura or something that they found. And I go, what are you gonna? He goes, I don't know if it's gonna make it. I don't know if the car's gonna make it to Key West. <laughs> And he goes, and if it does, we're flying home, and we're just going to stick the title under the uh, under the uh, hood because there's no windshield wiper. We're just going to stick the title on, on the dash and freaking walk. But yeah, that's the closest to a cannonball run I've heard of lately. But they they were running them for a little while, uh, like every year. Uh, my nephew and I, when I first came back to Kentucky in, in uh, 2013, uh, we were we were talking about maybe doing one, and I, he looked up online. They were still running them. And it was coast to coast, east west, or west to east, depending on. Yeah, they were New York to L.A., weren't they? Is that what they were? Yeah, that's nuts. Can you that's pretty cool. Thing? I know they were based on real. Think that in the Gumball Rally. I think that was based on a real thing too. Yeah, I'd do it. I'd do it. That I would do it just I'd once. Do it. Fuck it. <laughs> I'd start in New York. I'd probably get pulled over. You know, PA. <laughs> 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 Be in jail in Erie. <laughs> going, Dang it! I didn't know a Dodge Dart could do eighty miles an hour. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it was the only car I could afford on my budget. <laughs> Everybody else is doing one hundred and sixty. I'm driving eighty, getting pulled over every <laughs> county line or, or Chevy Monza. I'm just thinking, yeah. <laughs> Damn, this Yugo is a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be fun though. <laughs> Uh, so you uh, you got anything planned? Are you gonna are you gonna try and do anything? Like uh, what do you as a as a con? When do you think this is gonna like in your in your prediction of how you've seen things are going? Aside from Georgia, obviously, when do you think the country is? Do you, do you think the country will get back to business as usual, or do you think it's gonna be a life as changed as we know? You it? know, some people are saying oh, it'll be November and stuff like that. I think I'm trying to think positive. I'm hoping June or July. Yeah. At the latest, I mean it. It, it sucks because like at, at like I had shows for May, and they're gone now. Yeah, my April and May is gone. Yeah, and, then, and I got shows in June and July, and I'm just waiting for the call to say, "Yeah, I'm sorry, we can't do those." You know. Yeah, I, and I don't have it. I didn't have anything booked for June because I wasn't booking that far out. And um, but uh, hopefully it opens in June, and that way I can be the house guy at the punchline because they told me <laughs> if they open up, they. They used me for three weeks or so till they got you know some revenue built up. Nice. Um, as far as ships go, uh, we got an email from Carnival said they weren't starting until June twenty seventh. I'll be surprised if they actually start back up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you mean, period? No, no, like like right now. I mean, right now, all the entertainment industry should be shitting in their boots because it's just it, they're lowest on priority. I mean, we gotta yeah. we gotta keep. Food, we got to keep the food going. We got to keep, you know, our, our energy, like, you know, as far as power or gas, we got to keep those things going. And those are the biggest problem. And then, of course, our healthcare workers have to stay in flux. All our, our first responders still have to be out there. So, I mean, it's just there's this a, a huge line of people that, that already are at work and will still be at work. And then there's a line of people that need to go in first. I mean, what, what's Vegas going to do or Reno? I mean, these places are huge revenue makers for that state, and I mean they're not going to let them open back up anytime soon. Right. That's, that's nuts. I, I, mean, I wonder. If casinos have gone to online gaming. Is that is that have the casinos done that? Gone to online online gaming? I, that probably is one of their sources now. It's got to be right. I would think. Yeah, I mean the travel industry, like like the government just bailed out the the airlines. So I mean, you know, you know, they were dying because no one, no one's going to travel right now. Um, no, we just went and picked my my son works on a cruise ship, uh, Osmara, and he got off uh, finally. He was stuck on there for forty five days. Oh my god, uh, poor kid! He got home. Uh, what day did we pick him up? Today's Tuesday. We picked him up Saturday. There were six people at the uh, Atlanta airport that I saw. Wow. That, the parking lot was, which is usually just loaded that garage. There was maybe twenty cars there. Wow! And uh, maybe three to four cars dropping people off to go inside, and 
Yeah, it was crazy. I had never seen it that empty ever. Yeah, I mean, people that make a living Uber, I mean, they're they're done. People, you know, Lyft, Uber drivers, cab drivers, bus drivers, I mean, no one's going anywhere. Gas, cheapest I've seen in 30 years. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. all a 35 here. I don't know what it is in Georgia, but I mean, a buck 35 is cheap as shit. But yeah, yeah, it's about, yeah, I saw about dollar 35 too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which was pro that was how much gas was when I first hit the road in '95. Yeah, I was gonna say mid '90s was probably the last time yeah. that, that cheap. But I mean, it, it was '93 or '92 when I saw it at 99 cents, and I remember saying I was at Fort Campbell, and I remember saying to my buddy, I was like, "This is the cheapest you'll ever see it in your life," and I pray I'm wrong because <laughs> I filled my tank the other day and it cost me 16 bucks. <laughs> I was like, "Woo!" <laughs> <laughs> we go to the grocery store down the road and you turn, you give them your card, right? And then it adds up points if you spend money. Well, I haven't been getting gas. I mean, the, the gas station, the, the uh, grocery store, the gas station are half a mile away. So I haven't been going anywhere. So all these points are just adding up and adding up. And the lady handed me a thing the other day and she goes, you get a dollar off a gallon. Okay, have you not been getting gas at all? I go, I'm driving two miles a, you know, every five days. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> So finally, uh, when I went and got him at the airport, it, the gas tank finally got down to like a quarter of a tank, right? So I went to go fill it up, and it was a um, dollar thirty some dollar thirty five. I got a, I did thirty five cents a gallon for ten gallons. Yeah, I filled my tank for four dollars. <laughs> Back in the day when someone said I give you five bucks for gas, you were like, hell yeah, I give you five bucks for gas. I'll fill my tank. So I got in, I had a receipt to Jody, my wife, you know, and I said, uh, welcome to 1978. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, the, in that in that kind of way, I mean, maybe the, the, the price of things will start coming down, like the price of airline tickets come down, the price of cars come down, the price of houses come down. All that stuff would be good things, you know, for this country, because... Our housing market's ridiculously blown out of proportion, has been for years. Um, you know, our, our economy is like so friggin' expensive. Um, or does it go backwards and everybody wants to make their money back and when it gets going, they crank everything back up again? Right, well, uh, how about you just, you crank everything back and then just make everybody's pay kind of scale to it. I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy to go back to when a dollar meant something. Because now it's like, you see you see a dollar on the, like, I'm a big guy and I see a dollar on the street I mean, my juice side will kick in, and I want to pick it up, but that's a long <laughs> ground. I'm just, just, I'm not doing it. I'm just going to keep walking. <laughs> it's sad when you somebody says you could be a millionaire, and you're like, yeah, that'll last about four years. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> millionaire. Woohoo! Yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. it used to be something. Now it's just like I made my first. The Dollars in L.A. is a uh, two-bedroom fixer-upper. Right, right. Absolutely. I'm not. It's not even a joke. That's no, the truth. That's yeah. Why, that's why a lot of Hollywood's coming out uh, our way. They're doing a, like a lot of filming's happening in Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia. A lot yes. of coming this way yeah. because uh, the land's cheaper, the help's cheaper, everything's cheaper, and you know they get held held the better views. They can get cities if they need cities. They don't need L.A. You know, and a lot of people are figuring out. A lot of people are leaving L.A. now too, because it's just yeah, too expensive. You can't make it out on there on one income unless you're, you know, a billionaire. You just can't do it. That's why we ended up leaving. We uh, and we found the house, and the mortgage was cheaper than our rent. And sure, we're like, screw it. You know, plus uh, they're doing a lot of auditions online, and then the callbacks were in Georgia. So I'm like, well, why in the hell? Right. <laughs> Why don't you just move to Georgia, do the online, and then drive an hour, you know, right. instead of flying across country, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't think L.A. has the uh, name recognition it did before. I don't think anybody is really no one, excited. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. They it, live in L.A., people don't go, ooh. Right. It used to you be, know. It, like, same, I think New York's under the same scrutiny. It's the same kind of thing. Like, it used to be you couldn't find your way into any type of career unless you were in New York or L.A., and now I think that's changed. I think it's actually going towards a, hey, we can we can talk to anybody anywhere. I mean, I'm in Kentucky. You're in Georgia right now. We've had an hour conversation. You know, it's like we can do that. Right. Anyway. You know, right. technology is there. So you don't need to bring people in. And it's easier, you know. And right. people are becoming more xenophobic anyway, where they don't want to touch people or be around people anyway. So a lot of people prefer this. 
Well, <laughs> yeah, we probably should have wore masks during this. <laughs> <laughs> I contemplated it, but you know, I, I, I'm drinking beer, and I don't feel like doing it. So. <laughs> I was actually thinking about you coming up on screen and me having a mask, going, "I don't know if this is safe or not." I've never zoomed. <laughs> Dale, it's been a blast, man. Where can people find information about you online? DaleJonesComic.com. That's the website. And I'll make yeah. sure. Have a look. And if you want to go on Twitter and all or, or Instagram, it's all Dale Jones Comic. I got everything linked to that. It's fantastic. And I'll make sure I throw a graphic up there so everybody can see it. Yeah, you've been amazing, dude, as always. Miss working with you, dude. Hopefully we'll be able to do that again soon because that was a ton of fun. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We need to get back on the road. That'd be very cool. I'd love to hang out with you. Man. That'd be awesome. And thank you so much for doing this. Hell yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. It's good to talk to another comedian. Right. It's lovely. <laughs> well, to do it again. All right, brother. Take care, right. man. You take it easy. And if, if you like the, the show, make sure you throw a like down there somewhere. There should be a like. And uh, there's a subscribe button over here. And hit the bell. And hit the bell. Yeah, ring the bell. And, uh, you know, check us out, man. Stay in touch with us. We're always putting out videos every week. And uh, it should be a lot of fun, right? Write us a letter. Okay, write us a ring. <laughs> write us a <the> mail. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, that should work.